Hi, welcome, welcome. I want to thank everybody for their likes, shares, and subscribes. And today I wanted to bring you more healing messages. Um, this message is about narc abuse awareness. And I would like to talk about these topics because I've experienced narcissist abuse. And I want to enlighten you guys on some things that um, you may have to work on with yourself or things that you had to work on uh, on yourself to overcome the narcissistic abuse. Um, the title of this message is Learn to Understand, Not Be Better Than. So I just want to start off with making this uh, clear. You're not better than anyone in this whole wide world. Nobody is. We're all at different levels. We're all at different levels regarding what we know, um, how we grow, um, things that we see, things that we haven't seen. Um, and so in this life, there's duality. Um, there can't be light without the dark. There's good and bad. There's evil and good. There's night and day. And so, you know, if you believe that we have, you know, different parts of ourselves are simultaneously um, going right now. There's a you that may be on a lower level in one of these universes. There may be you on a higher level than what you are right now. And so all these parts are parts about yourself. So technically, nobody is better than themselves. Um, nobody's, excuse me, nobody's better than someone else. All you can do is be better than you were the day before. And I say this to say is because we need to make sure that we are checking our egos. It's easy for us to judge someone based on... Um, Things that they decisions that they made in their lives, things that you didn't uh, make in your life and say, well, I'm better than them or because I know more, I'm better than them or I have more. Um, I'm better than it's so easy for people to say that when we all know the wealthiest person can be the slowest person in the room. Yeah, they got money, but they don't mean that they know a lot. Yeah, they um, may know a lot, but spiritually they don't know anything um there's so many different examples of where um we may feel like we're better than or we're because of our age or how much we got or how much we know we're better than the next person the oldest person in the room could be the slowest person in the room so um i just want to say that for everybody to make sure that they are staying down to earth they're staying humble um, with the knowledge that they're obtaining since we are in the information age and and also just be aware, check that ego because somewhere, you know, somewhere in the world, you know, there is a lower part of you. Um, you may have had to deal with that now. You may have to deal with that daily. You may have to deal with that, you know. So, you know, um, it's always good for us to check ourselves. So, um, I wanted to talk about those relationships with the narcs that you may have had. And this is regarding, you know, anybody that you may have encountered at one point in your life. So it could have been relationships with coworkers, um, bosses, you know, lovers, friends, um, family members, um, being in marriages, um, just kids, um, parents, you know, so um, there's so many different relationships that we enter um, daily. Um, and so you could have experienced a narcissist at one point of time in your life, as well as you could have displayed some of these narcissistic traits as well um, that you may need it to heal. And sometimes the biggest narcissistic trait is living in ego. Now, let's be clear. Um, some of the times that we have encountered narcissists is because we were in our ego selves. 
So, you know, we have to be honest with ourselves that sometimes we're living in ego. Sometimes, you know, we feel like we're the victim. Um, you know, we haven't done anything wrong to anybody. We feel like, um, so, you know, playing the blame game. Um, sometimes we can feel like, you know, um, even though they're doing X, Y, and Z, um, I know that I'm, you know, I can help them. I can, you know, I'm good enough to to help them. I'm good enough to heal them. I'm good enough to, you know, teach them, show them the ropes. Um, I, I'm the OG. I, you know, I got this, you know, and it's like that's all ego based because we all know that. So being controlling, uh, we all know that. You can't force nobody to, to learn. You can't force nobody to grow. You can't force nobody to even love you the way that you want to be loved. You can't force anybody to do nothing. All you have to all you have is control over yourself. And even with our children, we can only tell them so much. They're still gonna make their own decisions. They're not with us twenty four seven if they are, you know, of age, you know, um, an older age where they're going to school and they're hanging out with friends and things like that. And even with children, if you got them going to the daycare, um, well, got them going to preschool, they still going to make their own daily decisions, you know. So we only have so much control even in those situations. So, you know, a lot of the times we were in our ego when we met these narcissists. Um so, you know, with these narcissistic relationships, they taught you a lot. So, again, um, it's not for you to think that you're better than a narcissist. You know, if you've reincarnated here, you know, which I feel like we all have, there was once upon a time where you might have turned your emotions off or you might have experienced something so traumatic that you was walking around emotionless. You didn't have no feelings. You know, your heart was closed off. Even now, there's plenty of times where you may have entered some relationships with people where you was heartless. Some relationships with people where you were too giving. Some relationships were people where um, you had your boundaries all the way up. Some relationships where you didn't have no boundaries. And so, you know, we all go through different things. We have um, this thing called free will in life. And so there's times in our lives where we might have made some decisions that weren't for our best, highest good. And there's some decisions where we made for our highest good. So we all have to remain, you know, um, humble and make sure that we're not thinking that we're better than someone because we decided to elevate and grow. They didn't decide to elevate and grow. Cool. That's their decision. So it's not for you to be like, oh, well, they ain't nothing. You know, they're bottom of the barrel. You know, they did this. They did that. They're heartless. Da, da, da. And it's like, cool. There's times where you could have been the same way, you know, and maybe not intentionally, unintentional, but you still did it, you know. So it's very important to uh, re remember that. And again, you can't change people, you know, you can't force people to change. So all you can do is move away from people that are narcissistic. It's not for you to change them. It's not for you to heal them. It's not for you to force your will onto somebody else's when they've already made the decision, the choice for themselves. You can't determine how somebody should be growing. Oh, I feel like they should be, they're this age, so they should be better than, you know, where they at right now, or they should be thinking on this level, or they should be, that's for them to decide. That's, everybody has their own choice in life. And I, just an example, I will myself, I'm raising children and it's like, yeah, I told them everything that I could taught them everything I could don't mean that they, you know, they're going to do everything I told them to do. They have free will. So they have to make their own decisions. They're going to go through their own lessons. They're going to grow through certain things that I might not agree with. And it's not for me to be in my ego or you could have made some, a lot of mistakes, you know, and you're explaining yourself, well, I'm sorry, but this is why I did it. It's like, they don't care, you know? So um, it comes across as making excuses. So you got to be um, unapologetically you. You know that you're going to make mistakes. You know that you're not perfect. And going around explaining yourself to all these people is doing what? You're trying to prove something to them. And you don't have nothing to prove to anybody. So that's kind of how we have narcissistic tendencies ourselves. If we don't check them and they go unchecked, 
then, you know, you can display narcissistic traits. Um, but dealing with these narcissists, they taught you to heal your addiction. So you might be addicted to even just sleeping with them. It's like, okay, they're not treating you right, but you're still engaging in sexual activities. Why? You know, that's something that you have to look at yourself and say, I'm not even getting treated the way I feel like I deserve, but I'm still giving my body to them. Somewhere you have turned off your emotions to where you're still able to bust one inside these people or on top of these people and they're not even treating you with respect because you're not respecting yourself. So everything that um, we can complain about the narcissist, we have to look at ourselves and see how do we get to this point. Um, you might have been a person that you are the giver and so you're used to going out, giving out energy, and it's hard for you to receive stuff from people. A narcissist will teach you, hey, I'm going to take everything you got to give. So then that, that teaches you that you need a give, equal give and take situation. That you can't always be the giver in all your situations. And you can't always feel like, oh, well, I don't want to take anything from anybody. I don't need no help. I got this. That to teach you. That's not good either for you to always be like, I got this. I'm N I N D E P. That's cool. You can be independent, but there comes a time and a place where everybody needs help at some point in their life. And like I said, dealing with the narcissist, they take so much for from you. They give you a little, and they take more than what they they gave. So then you'll start seeing like my next relationship, my next friendships, my next situations, I want to make sure that I am getting as much as I'm giving. So, you know, that teaches you that. It teaches you to heal the fear of being in the relationships. You might not be be a person where you feel like, oh, is there any good people out here? I don't think so. Or, you know, some I've ran into people where they've been like, that high school love stuff is over. You know, love ain't like that today. So if you have that mindset where you're walking around, you're in fear of being in a relationship, non-committal, um, you've closed your heart off to people. Sometimes, let's keep it real, it's easier to just deal with a narcissistic personality because you don't have to open up. You don't really got to give all your heart. You ain't really got to put in a lot of effort because, you know, you're not even expecting, you know, to have find true love anyway. So you settle for the narcissist. Um, so these are some things that we have to work on with ourselves. And a lot of it started in childhood. You might not have been around people that you felt genuinely loved you or loved you for yourself or you felt like you wasn't good enough to receive love. And so what was it? It's easier to be with a narcissist, somebody that, you know, they... You don't expect a lot from them because you didn't expect a lot from the people that you was raised by. Um, it teaches you to heal your childhood wounds. Um, like I said, a lot of this stimulates back from your childhood. And it's like it teaches you to look at yourself and say, well, why did this person even how did I allow this person to come in my life? Because at love bombing is them just, you know, laying it on heavy to you and then pulling back. And it's like. How did you let somebody game you like that? You was so desperate and craving love that you let them come in hot and heavy with love. You couldn't see, you know, that they was just gaming you because you was that 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 shows you that you was deprived of love. And not from outsiders, from yourself. You was deprived yourself from self-love. You might not even know what self-love is, how to even love yourself, how to even you know, how to even pour into yourself before you was pouring into others. You might have been a person to just go around pouring into other people and you was showing yourself no mercy, no love, no compassion. So it does teach you that to look at yourself. You know, um, we can sit up there and blame, 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 blame. But at the end of the day, it's things that was lacking in us is the reason why we attracted the narcissist in the first place. Um, it teaches you to release from attachments. So people will say, well, I was with the narcissist for years or I was, you know, this, even if you was with the narcissist for 30 days, 60 days, whatever, you still had to work on uh, detaching because the first sign of disrespect 
the first sign that somebody lies to you, the first sign that somebody uh, abuses you, the first sign that somebody is, you know, laying it on thick and then pulling back, you should have detached. But no, you didn't detach. You just kept it going. You kept going and going and giving chances and chances and, you know, just kept trying to see what's going to be next. What's what's the next thing? And it's like you have to work on detaching because at that point when you felt something in the pit of your stomach that wasn't right, you should have walked away, but you didn't. So that's something that you have to heal within yourself. Relationships sometimes are for a season and sometimes they're for a lifetime. And so you needed to learn the difference. Um, holding back communication, because if somebody's love bombing you more, most of the time they're doing all the talking um, and they're they're like car salesmen. They're selling themselves to you. And I got this going on and, da, 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 and, da, da, and you just sit back listening for the most part. Or you could be a talker and you're sitting up there trying to prove to them, well, I got the job, I got money, I got this saved up, da 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 you know, this is and that. And it's like, are you over communicating what the things that you bring to the table and not listening to what they got going on? Or are you a person that just let people do all the talking and then you don't even have to open up? You don't got to talk. You letting them do all the talking. That teaches you to work on your communication skills. Because if you are communicating what you wanted and expected from the gate, then a lot of these issues could have been avoided dealing with the narcissist. If you're a person that's shy, quiet, you know, timid, you know, in fear of being yourself because people won't like you, whatever the case may be, then you're going to attract different narcissists. You have to know who you are and own it. And like I said, you have to speak up when somebody's doing something that you don't like. You should have spoke up. And then, you know, walk away, you know, so it teaches you to communicate more. And then even if you are a communicator to communicate effectively, because we could just talk and spit out a lot of stuff, just like some of these rap songs and some of these, you know, TV shows, different like that. They say a lot, but are they talking about anything? Are they talking about anything that's meaningful, that's worth something? So we have to be aware of that. Are we communicating effectively? And if not, how do we get there? What tools do we need to look within so that we can communicate what we're thinking, what we're feeling? You know, so that's something that's within yourself. Um, It teaches you to get out of your emotions. We be so, you know... Um, understanding with the narcissist. Um, oh, we feel their pain. Oh, we we can relate to their backstories, you know, things like that. And it's like, we need to use head over heart, make head over heart decisions. You know, were you too much in your feelings to where you were like, oh, the narcissist has been through so much. I can relate this and that. While you're steady getting stomped on, There should have come a time and a place where you use your head over your heart. Where you made more of a logical decisions like, okay, they've been through this. I empathize with them. But at the same time, I know that I'm working on healing myself. I can't take on, you know, any projects, you know, because like I said, people aren't projects. They're not made for us to fix. People have to make the choice to fix their own selves before we can even lend a helping hand. Um, It teaches you to complete cycles. So, you know, a lot of people have been through several cycles with these narcissists, several different seasons with these narcissists. And it's like, you're not going to even be able to break the cycle of releasing the narcissist until you realize that you're in a cycle. And life goes through different cycles, but you need to realize when you're in a toxic cycle and when you're in healthy cycles, that's something that you have to do on your own, something that you have to learn for yourself, even with your own self and your healing. Right now, are you hurting so bad that you're in a cycle of hurting yourself, sleeping with people that you shouldn't be sleeping to, watching what you shouldn't be watching, eating what you should? Are you in a toxic cycle? And are you 
now about to hook up with somebody where you're about to take them through your own toxic cycle? Or are you in a healthy cycle where you're loving yourself? Because if you're in a healthy cycle with yourself, you will be able to recognize somebody that off the rip is not about the right. They're not on the same train as you. They're not going through this. They're not in the same. They're not going in the right, the same direction as you. And I'm not even going to say right or wrong because at the end of the day, people make their choice. If they choose to go the other way, that was right for them. You choose to go that way. Go with what you, you know, go with the current. Go with the flow. Don't go against it. Um, you might have to heal the um, you learning how to trust love. You might felt like, oh, I ain't felt love my whole life. First of all, you know, source, the most high loves, you know, all of us. And this is why we're here. You need to find how to love yourself. So you won't be going around talking about, I ain't never felt love. You should have felt it from yourself first. You can't seek love outside of, outside of yourself until you love yourself first. So going into these relationships, we all these people and, you know, myself, um, being in narcissistic relationships, it's like, was you dependent on these people to give you love that you wasn't even giving yourself? Was you uh, expecting these people to love you and know how to love you when you don't even know how to love yourself? So we have to heal that where we're expecting something from other people that we not even expected from ourselves. If you don't know how to love, how they going to know how to love you? If you don't know how to love yourself. So we have to first recognize that love is all around us. Love is inside of us. Love is us. And then you have to trust yourself, trust love, that you're going to make the right decisions, that you're going to do what's best for yourself before you can go out and find love from other people. And then you need to realize that sex is more than physical. A lot of us hooked up with these narcissists and we slept with them. Some of us quicker than others. Some of them, you might have made them go through these whole games and time. And, you know, you might have felt like you put in a lot of energy with them. You know, you did the the rule, the 90 day rule and blah, blah, blah. And at the end of the day, once somebody is mistreating you, once people aren't who they say they were, once people start showing their true colors, once their masks start slipping, um, we should have walked away. But no, a lot of us still was engaging in sex with these people. That teaches you that something is wrong with you because you're able to physically give your body to them, spiritually give your body to them and detach because basically you're detaching from self once you do that. In your mind, you're telling you, this person hurt me. This person ain't who they say they are. They lying, this and that, but then you still engage with sex. You're detached from your emotions. You're attaching from your you're detaching from your spirituality, from your intuition, knowing that this is not right, but I'm still gonna do it. This is worth more busting this busting one on these people than self-respect. This act of, you know, getting down and and, and having a great time is worth more than my self-respect, my self, my self-love, my dignity. So somewhere down the, somewhere things are adding up. Um, it teaches you toxic soulmates versus healthy soulmates. There's plenty of people that's going to come into your life. Some people, like I said, are for a season. Some people are for a lifetime. Who are these people? And if if they're toxic, then you start looking at yourself. What about you that you got going on that's toxic on the inside because you're attracting these tar toxic soulmates? And then you have the healthy soulmates and you know that you're healthy. You're working on yourself. You're growing. You're learning. You're giving back to self first before you can even give back to others. You'll be attracting healthier soulmates. But we have to make sure that we know the, the difference between the two. Um, dealing with narcissists also teach you what it feels like when you give away your power. I know, for example, with me 
putting my parents on a high, expecting these high expectations for parents when they only know as much as what they were taught. Um, you know, so putting them on this pedestal saying, you know, big mama, they, they, they worked hard. They did this, you know, I trust them with everything. I'm going to go out, tell them what's going on with me. I'm going to expect them to know the right answer, to do what they need to do um, in relationships. I expect them. I know them. They go to work every day. I know who they are, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you gave them too much power in your life. That's their life. They got a life to live and you got a life to live. It ain't for you to be giving them your power, to be putting people on higher pedestals than they should. Because at the end of the day, we're all people. And like I said, it's better to understand what you got going on with yourself and not to be better than. We ain't better than we ain't better than each other. Your big mama ain't better than you. Mama and daddy, your boo, your boo, they ain't better than you. We all here to learn. This is earth school. We here to learn, learn about love, learn about helping, learn about healing, growing. So, you know, it, it taught you, you was giving away too much power to somebody and that power got take, that power got, you know, you had to take your power back in order to walk away from them. And if you haven't, then you're giving them too much power and they're just humans, just like you or spiritual beings. Just like you. And so they shouldn't even have that much power. They, You shouldn't have never gave them that. You appointed them to a position that, you know, they've, they ain't been equipped for. They weren't ready for. The most high didn't put them there. You put them there. And then it teaches you that, yes, you want to be in a relationship. Because a lot of us have been with these um, narcissists in relationships with them. And it's like... Being in a relationship ain't been the problem. It's what do you expect from a relationship? You might not have had no goals. You might not have had no expectation of relationships. You might have just been going with the flow. Well, you're going to get swept away with the current if you're just going with that. If you don't got no expectations, you don't know where you want to go. You don't see where it's going in the future. You're just in the relationship. Y'all just going with the flow, taking the punches. Boom, boom, boom. What? Then you're going to get swept away in your emotions. And um, but it teaches you what you want in partnerships. What do you want in friendships? What do you want in business relationships? And just just like when you talking to your spirit, guys, ancestors and angels, when you talking to the most high, what do you want? What do you you know? When you asking God to help you. You 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 will put expectations on God, but you won't put expectations on the people that's in your life. And I don't mean something that's just overly, you know, the expectations are too high. I just mean simple stuff like self, like respect, trust, love. It teaches you what you want out of these teammates. What do you want? You know, you, the whole overall goal is to work together as a team. Being with narcissists, you know that you was on, in a one man show, one woman show. They wasn't doing that for you. They wasn't helping you out. They wasn't there for you. So then when it's when you do go into these future partnerships, you'll know what you want and what you expect and what you're bringing to the table. So, again, I just wanted to teach you guys to uh, today um, to understand what you got going on with yourself, understand what is going on around you, and to remember that we're understanding to grow, to help us learn not to be better than the next person, but to help yourself. So again, thank you for watching my videos. Um, thanks for your likes, shares, and subscribes. I want everybody to have an awesome day. Bye. Take care.